Hey everybody, Poker Dad here. Uh, gonna do a, um, a showdown, um, saw, saw showdown review from my session tonight on the last day of January, January 31st. So these are all my hands I went to showdown. I played about 220 hands tonight in about uh, two hours worth of time. So um, anyway, let's get right to the action. And I, I sort these by um, by when I uh, by by the time played. So it's from the earliest part of the session to the latest part of the session. So as you can see right here, um, I am in the middle position with Ace Ten offsuit, and I do bump it up to my normal two and a half big blinds that I've been doing here at ACR. And I get a call from a, a recreational looking player. He's a thirty nine twenty three, and we get a fall from the big blind. So a small blind calls me. And uh, we get pretty much air right here. Um, so he checks to me, and I do check back. And then a king of hearts comes out. Once again, we go check, check. And another king comes out, and we go check, check. So not much happening here. He takes the pot with 4-4. Four, four. Sometimes we're going to have hands like this just because um, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how to filter out all these check, 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 check hands. So don't be here. I apologize. Uh, let's see, so here I have Jack-10 offsuit, and we get a, an open raise from the cutoff, so I call in the big blind. And again, we get complete air right here, so we go check. He bets uh, 5 cents, so I look at uh, a bet of 5 cents as almost like a check. So I have no problem calling this as a recreational player, of course. And uh, Oh, so I actually raise it. Um, why did I raise this here? I raise this actually as a bluff, which um, I'm not really sure is a great idea against a recreational player. Um, seeing myself do this, you know, obviously I didn't think I would bluff it here when I just mentioned that. So I don't really like this play versus, versus a recreational player. Um, five cent bet doesn't mean... Uh, five cent bet is like a check um, in terms of, um, you know, in, in terms of the pot odds. But um, still, you know... I don't really know if it's worth bluffing here. You know, obviously I'm bluffing with a gut shot. Um, but either way, you know, I do. And he calls. And now a queen comes out. So I still have a gut shot here. I check. And he bets 20 cents into me here. And I decide to call it. Um, let's see. 20%. Uh, yeah, I don't think I really should be calling this here. I think I should probably fold at this point. So I think Kong was actually a mistake here. Because um, I only have I only have four outs. And if we use like the rule of uh, four outs times um, four outs times two would be eight percent. I don't really think I can I can give this a call here. Uh, equity wise, um, Equity wise, you know, I definitely have enough equity here to call. Um, but I don't think he's betting like this with with nothing here. So for the fact for me to call with only four outs, because I don't even have an you know potential uh overpair here. If a jack comes out or a tank comes out, that doesn't really do anything for me. Um so I think actually I should have folded this here, but I do call it. And an ace comes out here, and I do an ill-advised um, bet. So I tried to bluff here. Um, but again, the problem here is this is a recreational player, and if he has any piece of the board, he's going to he's gonna call it. So I really don't think that a bluff here was the right play. I think this hand was just really poorly played. He calls it, of course, and he takes it with pocket kings so definitely a very bad poorly played hand by me i should have folded on the on the turn and instead i turned it into a really really bad bluff uh here we have ace four suited from the small blind i'm just moving my huds. I, I know you can't see the huds in the video i'm just moving them uh all right so ace four from the small blind and the uh, button opens, and I 3-bet, and we get a call from the big blind, and we get a call from the button. So we go three ways to a pot, and I do have the nut flush draw. I'm going to check it off here, and we check all around. And A comes out, so it's a, it's a brick for me, and it's a... So we get a, a bet here, a very small bet, um, 
uh, 21 cents into a 90 cent pot. Um, easy call for me here with enough flush draw and a call from the big blind as well. And I whiff on this board here, so we go check, check, check. And we actually take it down with ace high, actually. That's not bad. <laughs> I'll take that once in a while. I don't remember that hand. I only played two hours, and I don't remember that hand. Uh, okay, here we get jack nine from the, uh, essentially, what is the middle position, since we're five-handed here. Uh, I am going to bump it up. And we get a call from the button. And here we have a backdoor straight draw. I check it off, and my opponent checks as well. And eight comes out, so um, we do have a gut shot now. Um, let's see. We go check, check here, and I think which I think that's fine. Uh, this player is a 27-17. And we miss the board. We go check, check, and actually I take it down with jack high. Um, you know, on the turn, I mean, being out of position, it makes it just so much tougher here. Um, I really don't want to bluff out of position. I'd rather bluff in position. So I think I played this fine. Um, okay, here we have 2-2. Two, two. i got to lock this. Uh, can I lock this? Uh, lock way out. Wait, hang on. Bear with me. I'm sorry, folks. I just got to move these HUDs out of the way. Uh, lock layout. Lock and save layout. Okay. Um, so here we got 2-2 two, two from the small blind. And we get a limp from the... Uh, what's essentially the middle position here. And then a limp from the button. So I decide to just limp through. And we go four ways to a pot. And I do get a set, which is nice. I decide to check it here. Um... I know if I bet here, I'm a good chance that there's probably a decent chance that everybody might fold. Um, maybe not, but I decided to let somebody else do the betting, and we do get a bet from the uh, um, from the uh, middle position player. So I decide to raise him here with the best hand of one of the best hands you could possibly have at this point, and he decides to raise me all in. So, of course, I'm pretty happy about this. I mean, unless he has king-king or jack-jack, I know I'm in pretty good shape here. And we do go all in. And he ended up uh, with king. So we just had a pair of kings. He shoved me all in with a simple pair of kings. This was a recreational player, too, as you can tell, because only a recreational player really would shove you all in at that point. Um, so, yeah, take it down. Uh, here we have king-7 from the um, middle position. And I do bump it up. And we get a call from the button. And here I have the second nut flush draw. Um, so we go check, check. Eight comes out. Um, I actually have... Uh, you know what? So this is a very interesting spot, right? Because I have the nut. This is such a great hand. Such a great hand. I think maybe I I could have I could have bet here because I have an open ended straight draw. Oh no, I, yeah, I have an open ended straight draw, and I have the second up flush draw. Um, I think this is definitely a spot I probably could have bet here um, as a bluff and potentially for value. But I do check it, and my opponent checks back, and we're, this is a whiff right here. So um, we take it down with the king high. Uh, but I think on that turn. My, this hand is so powerful at this point, I think I could definitely throw out a bet there. Here we have Queen Jack from the... Uh, but but really, you know what, though? Like, the, the way that I'm learning... The way that I'm learning, really, actually, in this spot here on the turn, um, I'm more doing checking and calling on the turn. I'm really not trying to raise... You know, I could be aggressive here, but... Um, I think even just a check call is perfectly fine. So maybe, you know, the way I'm trying to learn how to play, really, I guess a check here is perfectly fine. Uh, let's see. So queen seven from the button. Uh, queen seven, queen jack off from the button. Um, I decide to raise up the recreational player who is at an 84 V pip, 22 
uh, PFR. So I raise him up to isolate him, and um, of course I was sitting in a great spot for him, sitting him sitting to my right. Beautiful. Um, uh, but the board is kind of a map board here. Um, I mean, it's not a map board. I have, I do have a uh, gut shot. So um, if we get a, uh, if we get an eight, uh, well, actually no, I have, I'm sorry, gut shot. I have a uh, open ended straight draw. So nine ten Jack Queen open ended straight draw here. Um, my opponent bets into me, and I decided to just call him. I could definitely n normally I, I I would raise here, but I I had noticed that this particular opponent through 50 hands now was betting with a lot of air, so I decided actually uh, to just call him here because I have the open ended straight draw. Not only that, but I also have two over cards as well. So, um, you know, I'm I'm definitely have no problem just calling it here. I could have. Normally, the way I'm learning is I, I would definitely raise in this spot here, but I felt like the best spot here would probably be to just uh, call the bet and see what happened next. You know, maybe I should have raised it, but I think I, he would have folded. But then again, isn't that the point of the whole bluff, right? Um, but I don't know. I just wanted to see another card, I think. I mean, yeah. I, obviously, I probably should have raised it here, but also my fear was with this guy being a recreational player, you know, as I've seen with Global Poker, um, sometimes when you raise these recreational players, they just love to shove. I mean, I don't know if he would have shoved the stack this big here. We were both over 100 big blinds at the time. Um, but um, that's what I decided to do. And now I hit uh, now I hit top, uh, top hair um, with a decent kicker. Uh, he bets into me again, and I just call it here. And now I actually do hit the straight. Um, he bets two dollars and forty-seven cents. So I decided to just min raise him here. Um, I, I could have definitely just shoved and went all in, but I didn't want like I just didn't want to scare him off here um, and have him fold. I wanted to get some kind of value from him. Um, and I thought that even you know I I could raise I could min raise him here, and he could definitely then shove over the top. Um. So that's why I decided to to min raise him here, and he did call it, and I took it down. I don't know what he had, but he could have had you know. Uh, let's see. Eight, nine, ten, Jack. He could have had a set. He, Oh, there's a 7 here. 7, 8, 9, 10, jack. Oh, so that, I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was a straight on the board. So, that's interesting. He raised... I mean, I guess he, I guess he just called to chop. Hmm. Yeah, I guess so. I guess is what, what happened there. I guess he called to chop. I mean, maybe he doesn't realize he'd be paying rake. I, I don't know. Um... I mean, obviously, I knew I was good because I because I had the queen here. Um, so uh, here I have Ace Ten from the small uh, from the big blind, and I call it in position. Um, I do have a backdoor flush draw here, um, but I'm out of position. Uh, so we go check check. A two comes in uh, again. Check check, and a three comes in. And my plan here uh, out of position was to check call. And see if I could just induce a bluff out of him. Uh, that didn't happen. We went check, check, and I just took it down with the flush. He could have had a flush too. I was hoping maybe he could, you know, that he would bet here, and then just hope he didn't have a, you know, a, a spade better than a ten. Here I have ten, ten. So I raise it up here, and we get three bet, and I call the three bet, and I do get a set. Uh, opponent checks. Um, I decide to bet half pot into him here. Uh, could have bet bigger, but you know, I wanted to keep this hand going and he actually raises me which is perfectly fine with me i got no problem with that so i'm going to call it and a nine comes out so i mean there is a definitely a straight draw out there i mean he would need to have um a queen eight for a straight and i mean that's pretty unlikely that he has queen eight but he has a recreational player he's playing 84 percent of his hands so he could definitely have uh he could definitely have queen eight um But then again, you know, let me just go back real quick. He three, uh, he three bet me, so he's not he's not three bet me with queen eight, of course. Um, okay. 
Makes you think maybe he has like you know ace ace king king queen queen something like that. Hand would have gotten really interesting, I guess, if I would have um, four bet him, but I wasn't gonna four bet him there. Now with the ten ten uh, in position, it's not necessary. Uh, sorry. So now we get a nine, and he does bet into me again, and I call it. And now a jack comes out, so I have a full house, tens over jacks. And he, uh, he actually, he, I think he pretty much like snap shoved here. Um, and of course I'm calling with the full house. And so, okay. He had ace eight off suit. Mm. Yeah. I don't know what the hell he was doing. I don't know what he was doing. Ace eight off suit. Three bets. Which is terrible. And then leads. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, he had an open in a straight draw on the, on the turn, but... Yeah, I don't know what the hell he was thinking. But I'm glad he got reckless like that when I had a full house, so nice to get paid. <laughs> All right, here we are next. Um, I have uh, King Jack suited from the cutoff, and I call the raise from the middle position, and the small blind comes in, so we go four ways here. Uh, I have the second nut flush draw, um, which I feel like right here is really the, fl the, the nut flush draw. Um... You know, because um, I just, I, I guess, you know, I really haven't learned about blockers yet, and I really need to learn about blockers. But <laughs> I know, I really need to learn about blockers. And it's one of the, in the upswing um, program, it's one of the courses in there. And I do plan on actually doing that next uh, in my adventures through the different uh, additional courses is blockers. Because, um, I mean, there was no. Let's see, I mean, there was no three betting that went on here, so it's. I mean, I guess enough flush draw for somebody else is definitely is definitely possible. Um, you know, especially for villain four, if anybody would have it, it would be villain four most likely. But you know, these other guys, I don't know if they're gonna three bet. I mean, this guy here has a twelve percent three bet, so villain ten probably would three bet with with suited aces. Uh, villain twelve here. Um, only at 39 hands. I don't really know if he would three bet with suited aces. Um, you know, with a, you know, especially ace hard. And so, um, I felt pretty good here, of course. Uh, but we're, we're multi way. So I'm just going to call this bad. I'm not going to fold, of course. Five comes out. Not really very helpful. Uh, he bets 50 cents. I'm just going to call it. And eight comes out. So, all right. So, <laughs> check this out. So, ah, uh, God. Um, so I decided to, um, bluff this guy. Well, what do I tell, what the hell am I bluffing with here? I, I, I want to go back for a second, okay? I want to go back for a second. Before I even show the result of the hand. Alright, let's go back to the flop. Actually, let's go all the way back, okay? So I'm calling a bet, right? Okay, so I'm calling a bet. Just think about what my calling range would be here. Uh, let me see what my calling range would be. This is my chart. I'm, I'm not going to keep it on the screen because it's uh, a pay chart. Um, what's my calling range? I just want to see. I'm going to say, all right, so I'm calling hands here like ace 10 suited, king jack suited, queen jack suited, jack 10 suited, 10 9 suited, 9 9, 9 8 suited, 8 8, 8 7 suited, 7 7, 6 6, 5 5. Okay, so let's see. I'm just, just thinking about my range, okay? Let's forget about the, the cards I have. All right, in fact, let's not even think about the cards I have right now, okay? I'm just going to think about my range here. Um, check, check, call. So ace, two, five suited, what exactly am I calling with here in, in my range? Uh, ace, ten suited, I'm calling with... Uh, King Jack suited, I'm calling with. Queen Jack suited, I'm calling with. Jack 10 suited, I'm calling with. 10-9 uh, suited. 9-9, um, nine, nine, 
nine eight suited, eight 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 seven suited, seven seven. I, I I'm actually calling with my entire range, including five five. So I am calling with a set of fives as well. Um, I don't have a. We we know I don't have three eights, and we and a good chance I don't have three twos. Uh, so. I could be calling here with a set of fives, but then again, there's probably a good chance that I'm going to raise with a set of fives in the multi-way pot. So probably a good chance I don't have a set of fives either. Um, so either I'm calling with a flush draw or I'm calling with ace-10 suited here. All right, and let's see. So now another bet comes in and, and another five comes in. And I call it. So what exactly am I calling with here? Well, if he thought I had five fives, now he really doesn't think I have five fives because um, quads are so rare. Unless you're playing on gold poker. <laughs> um, so quads are so rare here. Um, Ace-10 suited um, is definitely still calling here. Um and king jack suited, queen jack suited can definitely still call here. Jack 10 suited, uh, 10 9 suited, um, 9 9. Yeah, I mean, still my whole range is still calling here. 9 8 8 8 8 7 7 7 6 6 5. 5 5 is the only one that you could say you might want to take out of my range here. Um, but all those other hands are still, are still calling. Um, but I mean, like, what is he betting with here? Um, I mean, just to think about his range, his range is pretty big. Um, I mean, it's not big, you know, he's... Um, in fact, I could tell you that from... He, I played 352 hands with him, and his RFI from early position is only 12%. Um, so just to put this in perspective, 12% range... I'm actually going to put it on the screen. Uh... This is this is pretty much what a twelve percent range looks like. So I mean obviously he has so many aces in his range. Um Yeah. So, so he's got a bunch of aces in this range. Um my range is still so big at this point. I could have so many different hands here. But he's not afraid of quads, and you know he has aces in his. If he has aces in his range, which he has a lot, I mean, if he has an ace, which he has a lot of aces in his range, then he's really not worried about me having an ace here. Um, and especially he could have just a, a much better ace. So, and he's not worried about twos, because um, you know he's probably thinking I'm not calling with twos there. So, when the eight comes out, what's he worried about now? He's probably not worried about, even if I had ace-10 suited, right? He's not worried about that, okay? And he probably doesn't think I have any better ace because he knows this guy's played with me and he knows I'm aggressive and I probably would have three-bet him uh, with a better ace, which would have been, you know, ace-jack I wouldn't have, but ace-queen, ace-king, ace-ace. So if he has even ace-jack or ace-10, he's really not worried. Um, now, I could have 8-8. Eight, 8-8 eight. Eight, eight is in my range, so I definitely could have got a set here and gotten a full house. Um, and I think that's really, but you know, that's, there's not many combos of 8-8 eight, eight that he needs to worry about here. So, um, what was it, I think three, three combos, I think. Um, so, uh, he checks, I bet, if he's thinking about these things, um, then he's not worried about it. Now, I will say, I have had many failed bluff attempts against him. And in fact, now I put a note against him. Let me just show you the hand, by the way. He called it, and uh, he had ace-queen. Um, I put a note here. Uh, don't bluff first him. After this hand, I said, don't bluff first him anymore on the river. Because uh, I've bluffed first him so many times on the river, I can't, I, I can't even count this anymore, and he's always called it. So um, I'm now shutting it down versus this particular player on the river on bluffs. But um, yeah, I mean, it, when you think about it, and, and I'm gonna get better at this. This is one thing I really, really need to work on is when I'm doing these kind of bluffs, it needs to make logical sense when when it comes to my range. Um, and when you think about it here. 
when we talk when we think about what my my calling range was, specifically my calling range, which is a narrow range against an under the gun open, um, this hand did not really represent my range, and he's not going to be worried about he's not going to be worried about you know me having three fives or you know any kind of fives, and you know I mean he could be wrong of course, but um, he wasn't worried about it, so he called me, and there you go. Uh, oh, let me get my hand. My, uh, okay. So here I have 6-6 six, six from the small blinds, and I bump it up here. And let's see, this might be a check-check situation. Checking through. Yeah, it's just a check-check hand I've lost. Okay. Jack-6, small blind, I bump it up. And here we have third pair. So we go check-check, check-check. I think check check. I take it down with a pair of sixes. And here we have ace three suited, and I'm gonna definitely call it. And I have bottom pair and a back door not flush draw. And we go check 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 check, and I take it down with a pair of threes. Queen jack from the cutoff. I bump it up. We get a call from the button, and I have a back door straight draw. Couple of different backdoor straight draws. I check, he bets, I raise him as a bluff. Uh, he's a 27 17 player. Um, he only, um, well, that's insignificant. Alright, so I, so I bluff him and he decides to call. Uh, six is really not helpful for me here. So again, if I got to think about my range. Um, so I think this, you know, the fact that he calls it here, you know, you could probably say he probably has an ace here. Because I don't think anything but an ace here is calling. Um, a set might be raising me. Um, so I think he definitely must have, he probably definitely has an ace here. Um, so really, I can't bluff this. A six comes out, and there's a very small, slim chance that, and plus not only I'm out of position, which I really don't want to be bluffing out of position, but um, the one thing I do say is that sometimes I want to, not always, but sometimes... I want to be the aggressor um, and keep the aggression on after I uh, have raised it. So in this particular situation here, I did that. However, we can say again that this six of hearts most definitely is not in the range that I would have raised it because I wouldn't have raised it with a pair of sixes. And I wouldn't have raised it with a six. So really not a good bet here. He calls it, and I end up with the queen here, and you know what? I knew I was in trouble because I knew I was in trouble here, so I decided to check it off, and I suspected that he had an ace, and he did have an ace here, and it just made sense, um, the fact that he uh, he called my he called my flop raise. And I'm sure, you know, I, I, I bluff in these spots, which is good, okay? Because I know I'm going to be able to get value. I'm sure these guys are all using HUDs, of course, and they have notes on me about my bluffs. Um, so, which is good, because then I'll be able to get value off of my good hands. And that's the whole point of my bluffing, is, you know, I want to get, be able to get value off of my good hands. But I need to be able to control these, this situation. And, you know, sometimes i, I got to pick and choose my spots on when I'm going to be aggressive um, after, a ra after a bluff raise on the flop. Uh, I need to pick my spots and make sure that that turn card hits my range um, to continue to bluff. Um, I I shouldn't be bluffing, uh, continuing to bluff with a hand like six of hearts that does not hit my range there. And it just doesn't make any sense for me to you know for me to make that bet um, unless I'm representing seven unless I'm representing seven eight. Um, you know, but I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I, of course, I could definitely. Up, up, up with seven eight suited here five seven eight nine, but I mean it's it's just unlikely. But I mean if, if I have seven eight though, seven eight is great, is is definitely a great bluff here. Um, and then I can hit the straight. But I don't know. I don't think my opponent's thinking like that. I don't think my opponent's thinking on that level. To be honest with you, this is this is NL five. Let's not get let's not get too crazy. I don't think he's thinking on that level. But we I don't know. Maybe he is. You tell me. If you're watching, you tell me. Give me your thoughts on this. Uh, here we have 2-2 two, two from the big blind. And, of course, I'm going to call it. And uh, this hand, I remember, goes check, 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 check. And we take it down. 
And here I have Queen Queen from the uh, uh, from the um, small blind, and so I uh, three batted here, and he calls, and I decide to lead out here on this one. Um, I, I decide to lead out because the hand is kind of vulnerable. Um, I definitely could have checked it though, but you know. I, the the reason the, the reason why I did this is because um, it could always be vulnerable if he has any kind of ace if he has an ace king or something like that. Um, so that's why I decided to lead out here. Plus, not only that, I just wanted to keep the you know keep the aggression in my court here on this one, which is why I decided to bet this. Um, he then shoves me all in. Um, he's pushing me all in at this point with four dollars ninety cent bet. So I decide to call him, of course, here. And we both had queen queen, so there was only one winner in this particular hand, and that was ACR. But I do get twenty seven percent rake back, so I'll get a t tiny bit of that back. <laughs> uh, let's see, here I have two two from the big blind, and I call it, and uh, nothing happens here, and he had a ten. Uh, Jack five suited. I raise it up from the button. Uh, there's something, by the way, you know, I'm going to relook look at these, these ranges I've been using. I mean, these ranges I've been using um, are very wide on the button, but I've been really at like a really huge V-pip using these ranges because I've been, I, I, they have optional hands too. And I've been, I've been, I've been uh, raising first in um, all the optional hands, all the regular hands. Like, I'm not kidding. Like I've been having like a V-pip of like almost 40. So I've been opening up a ton, and I don't know. I just don't know. I don't know how I, how I feel about that. I mean, I, I'd be happier maybe like with thirty, you know, something like something like that. Thirty's fine, you know. I prefer a little bit lower, but you know, a lot of these players are tight, so I'm gonna have to readjust with that probably. So Jack five suited here from the button, and uh, we get a call from the big blind, and I do end up with top pair, but a pretty bad kicker. So we check back. Ace comes out again. We're gonna check, and it's gonna be a check fest, and he takes it down with King Jack. So I'm kind of surprised that he, um, well, I was in position, so I guess he checked and um, the ace came out and he didn't want to fight for the pot. So, and I wasn't going to fight for the pot either in the spot because it was just, in the spot here, I'm just, I'm just checking. So, uh, Jack six from the big blind suited. I call it a bottom pair. We go check, 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 check. And I take it down. And here I have Queen Jack off suit from the big blinds, and I call the small blinds bet. Um, he bets into me, and <sighs> so this is the guy who I said don't bluff against him anymore. Um, so I think I got a little scared off of bluffing against him here because this is definitely a spot that I would normally normally raise here. Um, then we get an eight, so I had to have a gut shot. We go check check and check check, and he takes it down because I'm not bluffing against him because I'm afraid to bluff against him because he calls all my bluffs. Queen nine suited. Uh, let's see, the big blind calls, and I do have a. Um, I bought a pair of a backdoor, uh, not flush draw. And the flush draw continues. We go check, check. Two comes out. He bets to me, and I decide. I mean, it's such a you know small bet, of course. 22% um, pot odds. I'm just gonna call it even with. A board is probably most times I'm probably beat, but in case he's he's bluffing, it's such a small bet. Um, but he takes it down with a pair of ace, uh, with two pair, and that's it. So um, definitely, I think interesting session. Uh, different interesting showdown hands here. Um, do me a favor uh, if you um, post any comments you want about any of the hands. Um, you know we've had a couple people doing that. I appreciate it, um, and um, you know that I, I always comment right away, and. Uh, you know, I appreciate any kind of feedback. Um, you know, it's interesting, too, like looking at these hands afterwards uh, right after my session and seeing what mistakes I did make. Um, and, uh, you know, it's definitely very interesting. And I still have so much more to learn. And I'm trying to learn on a daily basis. And just, I'm just going to keep going, you know. I mean, just keep going and keep going and keep going. i got so much more to learn. But definitely blockers is one of the things I want to pick up on next. I think that will help me with my bluffing. Anyway, um, appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you like what you saw, please subscribe. 
click the like button, whatever you like to do. But definitely subscribe. That's my favorite part. Um, and until uh, next time, Poker Dad out.